Hello and welcome once more to Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Hopefully by now you've been watching and this guy you know is Munch and this guy you know is Abe. And we are on the level Reservoir Row. This is one of my favorite levels just because <clears throat> just because Uh, <laughs> I like how Munch can walk in slow motion. Oh no! Just save him, save him, save him, and run. Just get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. Go, yep, hey, me there. Yep, see you later, buddy. What? Hey. <laughs> Alright, crisis averted. Now, this is one of my favorite levels. Because of the way it is set up, uh, this little puzzle is fun because you got to figure out which level o lever opens which door. It's not too hard; just some trial and error, and you'll get it figured out, no problem. But um, this entire level is fun because we are trying to get inside. Ugh, it's been a while since I played. I don't even remember. We're trying to get inside another factory. And there are a bunch of, well, there are five, um, see, there are five junior executive towers all circled around the factory that we're trying to get into. So, I, I, I like it because each, to get to each, um, Junior executive, you have to solve a little puzzle. So you just go around the circle to each tower, each time earning some money for Lulu and raising the water level a bit. It's just a, it's a neat setup. And um, I've kind of talked a little bit about how there are um, the really indoor industrial levels and then the outside nature levels. And this level has a, a lot of both. There's a lot of industry out in nature. Which is, I think just looks cool. I did not realize those guys were outside. And they're gonna chase me. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, well there is really nowhere to run. Because that doesn't stay open at all. Well, maybe I can make some crazy jump. Nope. Maybe they won't follow me. Hey, look at that. And, and now this is too small. Maybe. You can make it, little guy. Yes. Alright. Now, Abe can get off scot-free. Alrighty, so number three, so about almost halfway. Oh, I forgot that there's invisibility here, which kind of would have helped. I got along just fine. I think there's a remote control up there, but the water level is not high enough. Our little pals need to team up so that Abe can get to number three. Attack! <laughs> and then just close it so Munch is safe. Oh, he didn't. Why? What? Why did it close? Wait, does the button hold. Does the button open the door and the well? Okay, that's why. There we go. <laughs> that was really weird. Okay. Number three, you're going down. I wish I'd been keeping track of how much money um, has been donated to Lulu so far. How much moolah. 
as the inhabitants call it. Let's see. Okay. So, on to number four. Also, what's been fun about pretty much every level outside is the more you <laughs> clean up the environment, the more spoos grows. Which I think is neat and also very helpful because you need spoos to do, to possess and to open some spoos locks. I don't know if there are spoos locks and I did not mean to do that. What is this for? Behold, slags of odd world. Your demise is now. Let's see. Just follow the cords, the power lines, and they lead to nowhere. All right. That's helpful. I guess we need Munch. So we can climb up his little ramp. I have not played in a while, so... <laughs> I... yeah. Let's see. I, don't, I just don't know what does to, to do. I don't know. This little ramp is cool. It just kind of sneaks up into the middle of the platform. It's also hard to see sometimes. Munch, come on. Get your head in the game. Oh no. You better step it up, Munch. You're in trouble. Yeah, follow me. <laughs> oh! Hey, that works too. <laughs> Once again, I don't know if those slags are extremely dedicated or incredibly stupid. <laughs> Probably extremely stupid. <laughs> Munch was so close. Opa! Now Abe can leave his podium. Hopefully he said his piece. I really like... I, another reason I like this area is... <laughs> I, it's, it's because um, I like how much you need to switch back between Munch and Abe. Because it's one of the characteristics I really like about this game, is being able to play Abe and being able to play Munch. And just how different they are. They both control differently um, a little bit. Munch moves slower as a... You know, they just have very different abilities. And... So that's one of the really neat aspects about this game, is being able to... Not only have different characters in a single player game, but uh, having different player, d different characters that you can use at the same time. You know, they're both in the same level, which I really like. Okay. Uh, so now that was number five, I think. Was that number five? No, this was only number four. Okay. Yes, this is four. Six is over there, so where is five? Yes, and in this area, you don't need... Like, typically, when you need to switch back and forth between Abe and Munch is... Uh, when you need... Like, maybe you need to use Zap, or maybe uh, you need to throw Munch across a gap. Hey. I made a rhyme. Um, so, no, you know, you need to use their different abilities, m mainly. And here is five. 
Okay, so we gotta traverse some bridges. But anyway, what I like about this level is the reasons that you switch are to solve the puzzles. You know, and moving Abe and Munch as pieces, you know, and placeholders to solve the puzzles. And now we run into problems because there are chance suppressors. Oh! Ah, oh. it's one of the things, one of the problems about it being so dark is that it's hard to judge distance sometimes, <laughs> which makes these jumps, especially these, every time I've played this game, these jumps have been my downfall. There's one particular part where they are extremely difficult. <laughs> Just because it's hard to see them. Oh, wow. I... I should have Mudokens. <laughs> also, Abe's... Wow. Alright. That's okay. I need to open this door somehow. But Abe's jump is also hard to be precise with sometimes. It's... It's... You can't really move him much once he's in air. So if you have like a little bit of momentum built up, he's only going to move a little bit forward. So you really need to... If you need to cover a good amount of distance, then you need to get him moving. There they are. And so it can be hard to judge sometimes, like, when to jump, because... Because it's hard to tell how much momentum you have and how much distance you're going to clear when you jump. Um, let's see what else. Oh, so, yeah, it's hard to... In some games, you know, once... When you're in air, you can move... You, you can move your character a lot. <laughs> very... Um, which is very contrary to... <laughs> the laws of physics in the real world. But it's also very handy. In, in a lot of games, you know. It can help to make corrections that you need to make to clear jumps and Abe does not move in midair well at all so if you don't get the initial jump right it's really hard to correct I don't know why come on I don't know why I'm doing so poorly <laughs> um Flubco. Is, that's what we're trying to get inside. Inside Flubco. And I'm going to get inside and then uh, wrap this episode up. Well, actually, on second thought, that depends on how well I jump. Because <laughs> this is the part where... Oh, I hate this part. Just because the jumps are not easy at all. They're small, and you don't have a lot of room to move, and it's... Another thing is it's hard to control the... Oh! It's hard to control the camera sometimes. <laughs> oh. Because it, it re-centers behind Abe, which is good throughout pretty much the whole game, except for right here. Oh my goodness! I made it up in record time! That's one for the history books. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, w I didn't want to say anything the whole time because I knew if I said, oh, I'm doing really well, I would, <laughs> I would fall right in. But hey, number five, junior exec. Giving up his money, only one more, and then it's off into Flubco. <laughs> nice shot of the mud archer there. Which is not supposed to happen. I just accidentally left him in front of the, uh, 
in front of where the camera goes to show that shot. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> that was foolish. Hopefully Abe will survive um, to the end. No, oh, no. Oh, I forgot I have to do it twice. Oh! Yeah. That's what usually happens all the time. Just so you know, yes, that is a nest right there. Although while I was playing, I didn't notice it. And so I thought I had to go back to the nest all the way at the beginning of the level. So that's what I do. Just wanted to let you know that yes, there is a nest there. Carry on. Uh, and, and unfortunately there are no nests along this walkway. So we gotta go back here and walk all the way back. <laughs> Come on, Munch. There we go. So almost there. Hey, what's happening? What up? Yeah, and then what happened there is Abel also slides sometimes. And he just slid right off the edge to his death. Alrighty, I am going to do this. Because I don't think... Yeah, because I'll, I'll do something like that again. <laughs> this is what this, this place normally looks like for me. Five was... I was very happy with... <clears throat> I was very happy with five. I, I was impressed I did that well. I may have to do... So basically, this is a copy of um, five, just reversed. They both, you know, just the same setup with the pillars around the platforms around the pillar. Whoa, that was a glitch. Oh. Again, it's hard to judge how much momentum. It's just tricky. There we go. All right. Another thing that makes it hard um, is he, he'll bounce off the walls, which isn't too much of a problem, but it can be. He can bounce off. Like, if I, if I bump into that center pillar, he can just bounce right off and fall in the water. But thankfully, made it up without <laughs> too much trouble. I like this camera angle. Get a nice shot of the Gluckin losing his money. Alrighty, I think there are a few more slags. Oh, that oh, <laughs> thought I wasn't gonna make that. But there are a few more slags, I think. Oh, and now Munch can reach that lever. That's right. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Well, they are doing that. Nope, nope, nope. Stay up here, guys. Get them. Okay, this was. Not a good idea. Since there aren't chip suppressors here, I should have... Oh, wow. Okay. That was not a good idea. I didn't realize how many slicks were still there. Alright. Oh, come on. Run. Run. Alright, this is, <laughs> I've led the Mudakins to their death. Come on, Munch. Oh no, I thought I was gonna try and just pull this and get out of here quick, but I realized I don't think Munch can get back up. I think Munch has to take the long way. Oh, 
is there a way for Munch? I don't see a way for... Well, the poor Budakins. I don't, I, I should have, I should have taken better care of them. Whoa! <laughs> That's the door! <laughs> That's hilarious. Apparently the door just... Oh, the door just goes into the ground. Come on, buddy. Shoot him. Wow. Oh, wow. Do you? Oh. I did not know that that affected Gorma. Because... Wow. Well, this has been awful. Hey, the more you know. <laughs> Alright, Munch. This is the way we're going out. We're doing this one for the Mudakins. I, I did not- I had no idea that affected Korma. I don't know how much that affects Quorma, because it says zero out of zero, but... Anyway, into Flubco, and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. Hope you enjoyed it, and this is Q, signing off.